we're gonna let you in on a little secret. We rarely pay for campsites. When on the road for weeks or months on end, paying $30 to $40 a night for a campsite can really add up. Yeah, and when free campsites can look as beautiful as this one, why not? In this video, we are gonna share some of the tips and tricks and resources we use to find free camping around the United States. So let's dive in. Like we said, this campsite that we're staying at right here is totally free and it is beautiful. We've got a campfire ring, a picnic table, um, tent pad back there, spots for our hammock and laundry. Um, and this site is located down by the river with a private little swimming hole and a hike to the ocean. It is absolutely beautiful. That said, not all free camping is this nice. We have spent our fair share of nights at places that are just not so nice. So we're going to show you some of the tactics that we use to help us find free camping that is also awesome. The main way that we ensure that we're finding free camping that's also really nice is by using our phones and using camping apps. There are several apps out there and over the years we have used pretty much all of them. Right now, the one that we're using the most often is called The Dirt. And the reason we really like The Dirt is because they have more campsites um, across the United States than any other camping app out there. They also have the most reviews of campgrounds, which is super helpful for us. We really like scrolling through what other people have written about campgrounds so that we know, um, you know what to expect, um, if it's gonna be safe, if it's gonna be clean, um, things like that. If you're interested, The Dirt has a free version, which might be totally sufficient for your needs. They also have a pro version, which has some more features like offline maps, which is super helpful when you have been off the grid. We're currently um, in the Olympic Peninsula and we have had like pretty much zero cell service for the last week and a half. So it's been incredibly handy for us. Zona also, the pro version also has some other features like some assisted trip planning and discounts, things like that. So if you're interested, we have actually partnered with The Dirt to create an exclusive offer just for our audience. We'll put the link below, but there is a, a code that you can use to try the pro version completely free, no strings attached for 90 days. That is three whole months. So you can go ahead, give it a try and see what you think. Quick disclosure, we do earn a small commission if you were to sign up for the Dirt's Pro membership. But remember, it's totally free for 90 days and it doesn't cost you anything extra. We're gonna show you just really quickly how to use the Dirt app, um, just so you have an idea of what to expect. So first of all, you can open up a map and you can see the area around you or around the area that you're planning to travel. And you can see all the icons of, of campsites nearby. And there might be a lot, like an overwhelming amount, because there's tons of camping around the United States. Um, what you can do is use the DIRT's filter function to um, apply any filters that you find necessary. Maybe you're only looking for free campsites, so you can hit free. If you have um, a tent and you're looking specifically for a tent site, you'll definitely want to filter through that. If you're in um, a camper van or RV that needs a certain type of of hookup, you can also filter through that. So this way it will narrow down the search results and you will have only the campsites that will fit your needs. You can then click on each listing and you will see um, a description of that campsite. You'll also see a list of amenities that you can expect. Um, maybe they have pit toilets, maybe they have flush toilets. You can see if they have fire rings. You can see really, you know, all the things that this campsite will offer. And oftentimes you can even find photos that past, um, past guests have uploaded and reviews, which again is one of our favorite features because we can um, get a better idea of what to expect. Sometimes you can even get tips like which particular campsite is the best 
or maybe that you need to arrive before a certain time in order to secure a campsite. So reading the reviews can be extremely helpful. So again, this is the dirt, but most of the other camping apps out there function somewhat similarly. And we'd recommend downloading a couple different camping apps and comparing them and see how you like their different features. Typically, we also consult with a couple different apps when we're searching for campsites just to see how they compare and, and see if they're showing us the same campsites in the general region. Um, two other camping apps that we like are Free Roam. Free Roam is nice because it gives you a little more information about each campsite than some of the other apps do. They have rating scales for things like how crowded the campsite gets, how much shade there is, which can be really important, especially if you're in a tent um, or in a camper van that can get really hot inside. They also have um, a rating for how difficult the road is to get there. So a lot of times when we find a campsite on the dirt, we'll check on free roam just to get some of those extra little um, bits of information. One other app that we use a lot is called iOverlander. And we really like that app because in addition to having campsites, they also have things that van lifers and people in RVs will find really helpful, like where you can fill up your water, where you can find Wi-Fi, where there might be public bathrooms along the road. You can find things like showers and laundromats, things outside of just your free camping. So iOverlander is another one to check out if you're interested in, in finding more camping apps. Just feel the summer sun as it warms up bed. When we're talking about free camping, there are two types of sites that you'll be looking for. There's developed camping or dispersed camping. Now developed camping is obviously a campground that has been developed as such. Dispersed camping is when there are no facilities around like this. There are no pit toilets or no picnic tables, no trash services or um, metal fire grates. Two of the best places to look for dispersed camping sites are BLM land, which stands for Bureau of Land Management, and National Forest. This right here is a national forest near Mount Rainier, and there are tons of dispersed campsites all around. Just to give you an idea, it is a weekend, a Saturday, in fact, in the middle of July, and there are still plenty of dispersed campsites all around this forest. So that should just give you an idea of how many there truly are out there. Here's an example of what you can expect. This is a very nice, very large dispersed campsite. There is a fire ring, as you can see, um, and just some flat areas for pitching a tent or parking your vehicle. Some of the apps out there, for instance, The Dirt, have an overlay feature where you can see the borders of BLM and US Forest Service land on the map in relation to your location. That means as you're driving, you can see, oh, hey, I'm on BLM land and there might be dispersed campsites around. And once you start looking out for these types of campsites, you'll see just how frequent they are. A few things to keep in mind with free dispersed campsites are number one, a lot of times you might need to drive on gravel or unmaintained roads to get there. So be sure that you know if your vehicle can handle that or not. Secondly, a lot of these sites are in areas where you might not have cell signal. So just be prepared that you might be going off the grid for a bit. Third, it's important to look up and see if there are any fire bans at the time of your camping trip um, or any other local regulations that you should pay attention to. And like I said, you might not have cell signals, so it's important to do some research ahead of time. And lastly, it's really, really important that you clean up after yourself. Free and dispersed campsites are amazing. However, they are the type of site where we find the most trash left over from previous campers. Don't be that person. Bring everything that you brought in with you out with you as well. One last way that we find free camping is urban camping. Now this is not our favorite method of camping, but we find ourselves in towns or cities quite often because we work from our computers and therefore need strong cell phone signal. And so urban camping really means 
anything from camping in a parking lot where it's legal, like a Walmart or Cracker Barrel, um, or camping in within the city limits, again, legally. Urban camping can be very easy in certain places around the country, and it can be very difficult in other places. For example, in Southern California right now, there are incredibly strict guidelines and, and rules about sleeping in your car overnight and where you can and cannot park. So there's going to be some areas around the country where this is just not an option um, and other places where it's actually quite simple. We do want to point out that urban camping isn't necessarily an option for people camping in tents or those with big massive RVs. It really is only a good option for those who have fully self-contained camper vans like our own. Um, we have a composting toilet, which allows us to not have to worry about camping near a bathroom. We also have a gray water tank so that our um, dirty water is being contained within our van. We also have solar panels for electricity and we don't need to plug in anywhere. So being that we're completely off the grid, um, we can pretty much park wherever we want as long as it is legal. And we're going to share an example of what urban camping might look like. So right now we are parked on a street in the town of Bend, Oregon. Now there are a few things that we look for when we're planning to park in a residential or an urban area. The first thing is you want to make sure there are no signs around that say there's no overnight parking or no parking for more than a certain number of hours. And on this street, we are all good. There are no signs like that. The second thing that we're going to look for is that we are parking on a street where there are other cars in the street. You really don't want to stand out like a sore thumb. So you want to make sure there are other people also parked on the street as well. A third thing that, that you want to make sure um, that we always try to look for is that we are not parking right in front of someone's front door or window. So we tend to look for um, bushes or trees or fences that we can park in front of. Um, and right behind me here, this is actually an office building or a, a business building. So it's not anyone's actual residence that we are going to be bothering. Another thing that's really important to look for is that the ground is flat and level. It's not very comfortable going to sleep or setting up your van um, on an uneven surface so that is also important some people might need to look for a public restroom and the one thing that I do want to point out is that some public restrooms are only open for certain hours of the day and they might not be open overnight so make sure you are aware of you know what time that public restroom is open if that is important to you one other thing worth mentioning um, that is kind of just common sense is that if you're parked in a residential neighborhood or in a town, it's really important to be respectful of your surroundings. You can maybe just uh, sometimes keep it down. You know, no playing loud music or being obnoxious. All right. Try to be as discreet as possible. Staying in a big city and urban camping is just a little bit harder to find. Maybe the city has really strict rules and regulations or it's a really dense city and just hard to find a place to park overnight. Another option is using the app Vanly. Now this is still in beta mode I believe and it's a little bit clunky to use at the moment but essentially it works like Airbnb where people can rent out their driveway space um, for van lifers to come and stay overnight. Also like Airbnb, there are gonna be some hits and really great experiences as well as some probably not so comfortable places to park. Currently we are in Seattle and we are parked in someone's driveway and so far it has been a really great experience. This is our very first time using Vanley so we know that all experiences might not be this good but the host here um, has been really kind and allowed us to fill up our water if we wanted, use their trash bin for leaving some garbage if we needed to. They also invited us to our, their fire pit last night so it could be a really cool experience kind of like couch surfing but for a van. One thing to point out is this is not a completely free way to camp. This particular listing in Seattle costs $5 per night plus a very small booking fee, like something around 75 cents. So it's not totally free, but it's still very affordable. We did see some other listings that were, you know, 10, 15, $25. So it will vary and you might have to do some searching to find one that fits what you're looking for. But it could be another thing to check out if you're looking for a place to camp in a city and you are on on a budget. And when you can't find free camping, there's always the option to pay for a campsite. The prices that you'd be looking at can vary a ton, especially depending on where in the country you're looking. For instance, last night we were staying in kind of like a bougie area and all the campgrounds nearby cost 
between 40 and 70 dollars which is just crazy so we passed on the paid campground but tonight we are staying at a beautiful campground down by the river which you can probably hear rushing in the background and it's only ten dollars per night which isn't that big of a difference from free free to ten dollars not that big of a deal so the the camping apps that we were talking about are actually a really good resource to do a little bit of research on your own to see how much per night the campsites are and that way you can make a decision this is too expensive i'm going to keep going or you know ten dollars is a decent price and i might as well give it a shot so check out those camping apps if you're not finding any free campsites put on your filter for paid and see what the options are nearby So I hope it goes without saying, but no matter where you're camped, whether you are parked in the city limits or you are at a developed campground like this one, it's really, really important that you remember to leave no trace of your stay. That means cleaning up all waste that you create during your stay. And if someone else has left garbage, why not pick up a little yourself as well? Um, make the place look better or at least just as good as you found it. That also means disposing of your gray water properly um, and in the proper place. It also means guys, if you need to use the bathroom in the wild, that's fine. But there are some really important guidelines you need to follow. And there's tons of information about all of this online. So be sure you familiarize yourself with camping etiquette and making sure that you are leaving no trace behind. With more and more people camping these days, it's more important than ever that we are all being respectful and responsible when we're out in nature. All right, so those are some of the tactics and resources that we personally use to find free camping around the United States. For more information, you can head to the link in the description below, which leads to an article we created that goes into much more detail about how to find free camping. Yeah, also remember that if you're interested in testing out the DIRTS Pro version, be sure to also go to the description below where we have an exclusive offer. Remember, you get that pro version of the app completely free for 90 days, which is three whole months. Basically the whole summer. Yeah, so definitely go check that out. And lastly, we just wanna kind of mention that if you found this video helpful or useful, we would really love it if you considered liking the video or subscribing to our channel. That really does help support us and help us to create um, more videos in the future. Happy camping.